wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here. If you're catching the show between the holidays, somewhere in the holidays, we're in that holiday zone. I'm not sure when this is going to get published, but happy holidays to you. And uh, hopefully you had a safe and healthy holidays. Wear your mask, stay safe, uh, vaccinate, all that good stuff. And be sure to see us at the CES show. Uh, CES is going to be going on January, I think it's the 5th through the 8th. And we are definitely going to be there. We're going to be covering stuff. There's going to be oh, so much interviews uploaded to the podcast. You're going to just be like, oh, my gosh, there's so many amazing toys. And CES show is really like a giant toy store. So you're going to definitely want to stay tuned for that. There's a lot of products we're getting that, that are coming in that we're going to be reviewing as well. So watch for those in the Chris Voss Show YouTube channels. And we don't put a lot of the product reviews across the podcast, just to interviews of people. So you want to subscribe to YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button button so you not only get these podcasts but you also get the reviews that we do as well and whatever else the heck we're talking about go to goodreads.com forward says chris Voss. see everything we're reading and reviewing over there from all the great authors that have been on the show also go to all of our groups on facebook linkedin twitter instagram all those different places the cool kids are at today we have an amazing uh, gentleman he's on the show with us jeff lavelle from Strictly Restaurants. He's here to talk to us about his business and what they do and how they do it and give us an inside look into the whole sort of operational aspects of restaurants, which is topical right now because you know a lot of businesses are trying to keep things going and employment's kind of an interesting place, right? And Jeff is coming to us. He spent 24 years in the hospitality industry as a restaurant controller prior to opening Strictly Restaurants. His immense success is attributed in part to his detailed work experiences in various positions within the restaurant industry and a strong financial background. Jeff and his family previously owned and operated their own restaurant deli for several years. His last full-time position as CFO controller was with French chef David Boulet, which led him to start Strictly Restaurants thereafter. As being an industry insider, he has come to understand what each position and individual brings to the success or failure of a restaurant. Welcome to the show, Jeff. How are you? Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you very well. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's awesome to have you as well. Give us your .com so people can find you guys on the interweb. Sure. They, they can find us at um, www.strictly, that's S-T-R-I-C-T-L-Y, restaurants with an S.com. Jeff, uh, well, uh, strictlyrestaurants.com. They can find us. Uh, they'll find uh, information about the partners who we work with, up and coming events or anything that's on pipe coming down. And they'll look to see if the team on there as well, too. There is an info page. They can go on there, click on there, put their information in, and it will come to my email. And I'll certainly, by all means, I'll reach out to them. Or they can call me on my cell, 646-320-5206. There you go. There you go. So who and what is Strictly Restaurants and Hospitality Services? Strictly Restaurants came about as it is the name Strictly Restaurants. Uh, my career has been since I was 12 years old. I've worked in the restaurant industry and worked in every position from back of the house. And there's many positions at back of the house from a steward, prep, line cooks, chef, and so on, to a grill man. I worked in the front of the house. I worked in delis, I pushed hot dog carts, I worked in high-end restaurants, I worked at Denny's. I was a waiter at the uh, diner in Norristown. Uh, and um, up to, as you said, as you looked at my own business, and I had a deli restaurant back in the 2000s. I worked in every position, on the actually in the back of the house, in the front of the house, and then I worked in the office. Mm -hmm. And it was by my knowledge from being in the, in the back of the house and being on the floor in the front of the house, it um, allowed me to be successful starting out in accounts payable. And then I worked from doing accounts payable to being a staff account. And then mm -hmm. little that made it from being a staff account to a controller for Gladstone's Universal there at the California Studio, Studio Park, Studio City. I've come to years of being in this position as a controller, CFO, 
And, and as you said, my previous uh, full-time position was with David Boulay. I said, you know what, though? I've got to get out there. There are many restaurants out there, large and small, mom-and-pop businesses, multi-unit operations that need my services. And when you work for a company, it's funny, the back of the house is viewed as an expense. You're really not viewed as an asset because you cost money, right? So you have to turn around and show the restaurant operators that you can bring value. And bringing value is by knowing everything from, like I said, from every position, everything that comes through, what is the ideal cost should be of a concept? What are you looking for in margin? One one time a gentleman asked me, when you're looking at a P&L, what do you look at? And I said, mm -hmm. I can't give you a straight answer to what I'm looking at. <laughs> I could be looking at a, a percentage. I could be looking at a, a dollar amount that does make sense as I'm looking at this particular restaurant. So. To strictly restaurants was, like I said, if you would, came about almost nine years ago. January would be nine years. As after many years of being a CFO controller that I'm like this, like I said, there's people out there who need our services. And we've, and from it, I came where, if anybody's familiar with the brand Il Molino's, I came from Il Molino's, a single restaurant to where they went across the board. I came oh, wow. from Emmy's where they were one restaurant to now we're there across the board, Tam restaurant group. They were there. I brought them to IPO. So it's looking at the numbers and, and knowing what's there, give that information to ownership so they can turn around and make the, the decision to either expand or whatever have you have, whatever they're going to do. But strictly restaurant is, is, is just that we are restaurant accounting and hospitality services where some places restaurants will open up and they have flappers on or they're doing the Vogue, like Madonna in a sense. They, they turn around and they don't know, they lose sight of things. And then as a customer, I always walk into the restaurant and my eyes are always wide open. So and I get to see everything, the whole big picture from the time I walk into the door to the time I'm seated down at the table. As I'm seating at the seat, I take a look around at the whole restaurant and I'm looking at things and then and I advise them on how to make the place better. In, mm -hmm. in a lot of, and a lot of times they don't see that because they'll come in, like you said earlier about with the industry right now, we're going through labor shortages, we're going yeah. through supply chain shortages and so on. These are things that they have to navigate. But then what happens is if they're not focusing, <laughs> they're not walking to the restaurant, eyes wide open, they'll miss something and here and there and there. And you don't want a customer who will come in and see something and then go tell 10 friends and then they go tell 10 friends and next it would affect your business. So certainly restaurant is not just about accounting aspects of things, but it's also bringing light to you from a customer's point of view or what we see as we walk into the door and it helps you make the decisions to run your business. There you go. That's really important. I have a restaurant that I really like to go to and they make some of the best chicken in the world. And it's, it is the best chicken in the world as far as I've ever had. And, uh, but they have something they, they do where they have a, st a stack of those uh, trays and who, someone washes them and then they stack them. So when you pick them up, they're still wet underneath, which is right. like gross. And I don't think somebody fully cleans them because sometimes they're sticky. Right. And it's just, it's one of those things that you're just like, this is killing you. Just this one thing. You guys make right. all this great stuff. You know, I remember years ago seeing the, the number one McDonald's in, in America. And they're like, why do you sell so well? Like keeping the bathrooms clean. Right. I'm like, what? Yeah, mm -hmm. clean bathrooms. It tells the customers everything they want to know, and no customer comes back if the bathroom's not clean. So I had to write them and tell them, "Hey, it's, you, it's you. actually very, it's a very valid thing that you said because stewards. I never like to ever use the terms dishwasher. They're mm -hmm. stewards. Okay, mm -hmm. it's an elevated term. It's more of a respectful term. But those are the most important people in your mm -hmm. restaurant. If they're not taken care of the facilities, if they're not taking care of the of the dishes and so on, then you can't function. So it always does come from them and then you go on up. And that's funny that you say that because it does. And it's little things like that. It's it's and then it has a ripple effect. Because if that's not good, then they'll overlook and they won't see that the, the soda machine's not cleaned off and so on. Which things like this that they don't yeah. know. Or something's underneath the thing. I love going to places. Now I get down on my hands and knees and people think I'm doing a push-up. No, I'm getting down on my hands and knees. I can look underneath your uh, shelving and be like, hey, you know what I mean? If I yeah. do it, okay, and I put my hand underneath that and I pull something out, there's a problem. You yeah. know? <laughs> no one wants to see stuff like that. But so, you know, this has been a hard time for a lot of restaurants too over COVID. A lot of them weren't ready to go online for deliveries or taking orders online. A lot of them 
didn't even have their website set up. They really got in in not ready for the technically what would become the new age mm-hmm. of ordering food because of the COVID thing. How do you guys help companies prosper with the setup that you have and all that good stuff? Well, well, it's funny. It's 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 a good question. It's funny that you did say that because it wasn't people weren't ready for it, especially if a lot of your high end restaurants too weren't ready because they don't need that. Mm-hmm. And what we did was we worked with clients who basically you had to recreate yourself and mm-hmm. you had to reimagine yourself and you have to turn around and start thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. And I have restaurants that literally had no online presence in terms of doing what you said, etc. During COVID, you need to look at what sells what could um, be packaged on a to-go process, what could hold and maintain this quality as it goes along to the destination and come out of this, you have to survive. For the most part, I would say 99.95% of all my clients that I've had listen and work to them during the COVID that we came out. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's the ones that will kiss you on the cheeks. And then when you turn around and go back and do another thing. Um, uh-huh. And they're the ones that didn't succeed, but it was a challenge because a lot of people did it. And a lot of your operations that you meet, your lower to medium price point, they're already out there online. And you have to turn around and, and, and again, look at what sells, drive them to turn around and focus on what moves and then eliminate what doesn't and then focus on that and do that well. Mm-hmm. Meet the expectations. And COVID changed a lot with the, the timing and everything. People now ate breakfast, they ate lunch, they ate dinner. Because they were home. Yeah. So it wasn't, we were weren't at the office going to six o'clock, seven o'clock at night and say, let's meet up and have some drinks or whatever and so on. I'll have some tapas and whatever. They turned around and now they ate the, all the same time. The challenge is even coming out from COVID was trying to get that consumer to mm-hmm. now come back out for breakfast, come back out for lunch or come out for dinner. And then not that prime time, not that 5, 30, 6 o'clock, 6, 30 sweet spot that they all want to eat because we're paying for the rent to the overhead. We need you to come in at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And now it's a challenge. Now all of a sudden with this new variant out there, what is it, the Omnicore, now all of a sudden it's everybody's it's ringing the bell, the sky's falling and all this, and everybody's running around. They don't want to turn around, but it's we really need the consumer to, to have confidence in themselves and come back out and enjoy because I've noticed and I've seen it. I've seen it, the trend where people just want that prime spot. And, and if you can't get it, then they're going to go somewhere else. And and so you really have to stay true to yourself and, and give the consumer what they expect. But during COVID, it was a challenge. And I've had people where I had to tell them, you put on your big boy's pants or you put on your big girl's pants, you're the owner and you get in there and you do it. You know, everybody's, oh, 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 the feelings and all this stuff and everything here and all that stuff. And no, you have a business to run. Mm -hmm. It's what it is. And Strictly Restaurants does not look at, we don't look at the owners. Mm -hmm. And we don't say the owners. We say the restaurant. Mm -hmm. We we work for the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to make sure the restaurants are successful. That Mm -hmm. is our goal. Because if they're there today, then they'll be there. There you go. Now, a lot of the restaurants, I imagine these guys are chefs. They're cooks. They're These guys aren't accounting wizards. They have a passion for food. They have a passion for preparing great tastes and mm-hmm. presentation and a wonderful thing that cooks do, chefs do for us. And so I imagine they're not the most, you know, savvy on the other side of, uh, I got to run numbers. So what are some of the services, if we haven't covered them yet, that you provide? What's your range of services that you offer restaurants? Well, um, <clears throat> we actually can customize depending on, as you were saying, the operator, his or her knowledge of what they do. But we do everything from a daily sales report. We audit mm-hmm. the daily sales. We generate a daily sales report for them. And we present it in such a fashion that you can actually see where your strong and your weak spots are. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have have this over here or they're like, let me go in over here and this is going to tell me what it is. It's not. That's all the snapshots. So they'll go online to the platform and says, oh, this is what I'm at. It's not. You have Mm -hmm. to really dive into it. We generate schedules for them to really know what their back of house labor cost is, what their beverage cost is, what their beverage labor is and their overall labor costs. What are you doing? I have, I had one gentleman who I do this daily report and he wasn't interested in covers. He didn't want Mm -hmm. to see the snapshot of the covers. I said, yes, you do. I said, because covers is cash flow. Mm. If you don't show the covers and I don't see what they're generating in the price per person, there goes cash flow. So I do want to look at covers and you do want to see that out on there. So we do that. We'll do accounts payable. We do payroll. 
So we're, we're the liaison between the restaurants and the vendors. So we actually, strictly restaurants become your back office. Mm. You don't have an office. And that's what I was saying originally earlier when I was saying that you know, the operators view the accounting team as an expense. They never, especially, and I've been in it. I, I literally went from New York as accounts payable clerk to San Diego to be a staff account. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sitting in San Diego. And let me tell you, it's been being in this industry, everything's all about timing. Mm-hmm. Everything you have to know how to time things. So I literally can sit at my desk and I was able to do these, this one location's accounting activity in sh- like no time. So what I'm going to do the first of the time. And I felt, oh, if I'm trying to drag the day out, it's like stealing money, if you sense if you would. You're stealing time. So I turned around and wrote a position back in the early 90s that said, why if you have a person like myself sitting in this office and a person sitting in other office doing a similar position, I created a regional staff account position where I now was responsible for five stores. And so it's turned around to always looking to see how we can be at a value to the restaurant. And that's where, again, why I'm the same as that today. So not only do we do the dailies, we do accounts payable, we do payroll, we do weekly bank, uh, bank reconciliations, we do financial, we prepare sales tax, we do everything that, that is required as if you had somebody in house and at a wow. fraction of the cost. Yeah. You've been doing this 24 years in the hospitality industry. We went over your background on the bio and that really helped you in creating uh, the, your company, Strictly Restaurants, right? That's correct. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And tell us about your team and how that team helps your clients with their expertise. We actually have a, 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 a team of 12 people. A team of, got 12, mm-hmm. 12 people. We have 12 people who work with Strictly Restaurants and they come from a wide range of background. We have uh, different fields, different industries, uh, different if you would, educational levels where they uh, fall out in life. I life experiences too have contributed to their success. And so the team is, I would just thought, I think the team here as using that term is team, we're one team. So you don't have of the 12 people here doing 12 different things. You have 12 people here doing things that strictly restaurant does. You have 12 people here providing to the client what I would be providing to the client. And so Mm -hmm. on. So it it helps them because now, like I teach my guys, I don't know, everything's earlier referred to the phone and how people said, oh, you can go in here and see what it is. I like my team to touch the data. I want Mm -hmm. them to touch it. I want them to know your sales. I want them to know your invoices. I want to know when I ask you who's your trash man over at East Village or who's the linen company down in Philadelphia. I want to know. Okay. And that means if I'm going to ask you that question, you never know when I will ask you that question. That if you're actually touching the data, then you're already going to know the answer. When I ask for the sales, what are they doing? Then you know what they're they're at. And so they really contribute by being on top of and be part of the team. If information's missing, then they reach out to the clients. We talk to them. It's literally as if we're part of your management team. We're out there. We communicate every day with them. So I think that's the difference that you get. You have out there Bar Rescue, Restaurant Impossible, and an accounting firm. Well, Strictly Mm -hmm. Restaurant's all three of those wrapped mm-hmm. up into one. And mm-hmm. that's what it is. So these guys and myself here, we all work together for the benefit and for the success of the restaurants. Wow. And what kind of restaurants have you and can you help them? Any, in all honesty, it's anybody. We have, like I said, Michelin, we have Michelin star restaurants. We have medium to price up a little price to point up higher. We have medium to lower price point mm-hmm. concepts. And so it's to us, it's again, it's knowing the brand knowing what you have to offer, the product that you're selling, knowing your footprint, knowing what's out there. It's a race. It's a different. David Boulay was the high-end restaurant. David Boulay, minimum covers, but we did a successful operation. Il Molino's was, again, same thing, a, a, a smaller uh, brand, successful operation. Know what works and what, what doesn't work. Know if you're going to make pizzas, then, okay, how, what are you going to make the pizza? What makes you stand out and so on? And if you're going to do men, then you do it right. You do mm-hmm. it right. And it's a whole experience, a whole setting of everything that kind of goes with that. So I worked again with David Boulay. I worked with Iron Chef Maury Mora. I worked with Jonathan Waxman. I worked with Tim Cushman. I worked with many different organizations. So big or small, doesn't make the, my, my career path growing up from pushing a hot dog cart, working at my mother's chickens and ribs. I was a kitchen manager in 10th grade. I mean, mm-hmm. at that time they didn't have labor laws. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I was here on being running a place at 10th grade. When I was a senior, I was in charge of a cafeteria at a factory in Farmingdale, New York. Okay. And then I'm the one who's there. So again, they didn't worry about it then, but it's, you got to do it. You learn things, you learn how you go along. So again, it could be my, my experience is any, again, from a high end to a, to a cafeteria, to a cafe. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, now, can you help restaurants anywhere in the U.S.? That as, yes, exactly. We are right now, we are in seven seven states. I think okay. we're, about, we're in seven states right now. My goal is to actually roll out and roll across because especially now, people I think right now, they're kind of shooting at, I get clients who email things every night who are part of the closing process. And we see things, people are making decisions and they're like, Yosemite Sam, bang. They're making the decisions, and but really, it's not an effective decision. No. And it's, they're just shooting at the hips. And if you do that, then like this one person made a comment that they end up picking up the table because they cut the staff too long. They cut oh, wow. the staff, and they end up picking up the good, especially at the price point that you're at. They don't want to come in and see that the manager's service in them. You Definitely. know what I mean? So it's not, or if you cut the kitchen staff too much and then it takes half hour or 20 minutes, a half hour just to get an appetizer out. People don't want that. So you have to be strategically mm-hmm. smart in what it is. If you notice some business is coming down, then you turn around and shift gears and you say, mm-hmm. let's ship out a menu that's going to be much uh, simpler to get out and much faster to get out. That's what you got to do. So certainly restaurants, our goal is to roll out. Like I said, we are in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, DC, Virginia. North mm-hmm. Carolina, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And mm-hmm. I have a gentleman in California who is actually talking to us in Northern California um, about expanding his brand. He's buying into something he wants to expand his brand. So I commend people who are wanting growing, especially during this pandemic and so on, that they, they still have faith and they still believe that they can do it. And if you're smart, you come to Strictly Restaurants, as you're starting the process, then you're going to come out of the gate. You're going to mm-hmm. come out of the gate doing things smart. And that's our goal. That's our goal. We have people who come in, already been out there, and then they come to us, and I just draw a line in the sand. And I say, okay, we're going to put that over to there, and we're going to focus on over here, starting you off on this over here. We'll blend in what you did before, bring it in here. But now on a going forward basis, you're going to get accurate information. You're going to get what you need to know to how to run the business. And what I do, my success as the owner of Strictly Restaurant is I'm cash manager. Mm-hmm. I, I know cash. I know uh-huh. cash. And, and that is, if you listen to me, obviously, like I said, knock on wood, you listen to me, we came to the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And and that was a key. That was a key. And I think that made that cemented strictly restaurants out there because it, it was my seventh year. It was, it was I'm on a track to be my best year. And then all of a sudden, boom, the mm-hmm. pandemic hits us. So shift gears, get in, in management, what you do, your cash management and you work through it and you and you come out, you know, smelling like a rose. So I again to me, I think any restaurant, if we can get across the board, get across the country, expand and help them. As I said earlier, you had Bar Rescue, Restaurant Impossible, they come out there and say 30% of food costs, 30% of labor costs, 30% of... And you can't operate like that. A chicken and ribs place or pancake and chicken shouldn't be at a 30% food cost. You know? There you go. You know what I mean? And you can't say, I'll have a 30% labor. It's You really got to turn around and say the concept wise. I remember like Iron Chef Morimoto working with him. I didn't tell him how to cut the sushi. He didn't tell me how to go mm-hmm. one plus one to calculate. That's my job and that was his job. Mm-hmm. So awesome, man. There's so much that you can do for companies. And I, I love this because, like I said, most people that in restaurants are good at cooking food and making food and presenting food. But uh, there, I would imagine a lot of more accounting geniuses. I know when I started my company, I wasn't. How has your business changed or grown over the last few years? And what do you attribute it to? A lot of my business, a lot of my success has really come from to fur word of mouth. Word of mouth. And we've had a few have who let the fingers through the walk in online. But it's from it's from again, it's from that. And it's from people reaching out who know me from the past, called me up and said, I want to open up my business and I want you to there. Or I heard you work with him over here. We like we want you to turn around and come work with us. I literally went from making a risk. When I started this company, I had four kids. Four kids at wow. home. Yeah, so I have four kids. And and that's the scary part about it is that every entrepreneur who goes out there, if they have a family or they have obligations, you can't come out here and say, I need a paycheck. Oh, because yeah. you're now the boss, man. You're the boss lady. You can't turn around and say, I need a paycheck. You got to now turn around and put your faith and, and trust into yourself 
Get out there and make it work. So I did from David Boulay, and I came out here. My very first client was Kajisu, uh, and I have them. They're my Michelin star restaurant. My next one was Kaku Japanese. I have them from the beginning over here. And, and then you just grow from mm -hmm. Adele's in Nashville and so on, Country Music Hall of Fame place. You just grow, and, and it just continue on expanding. It's this company. Literally, we have... I think about, about what do we got? About uh, 30 something. We have about 30 something restaurants. We have about 30, yeah, about 30 something restaurants is what we, is what we have. So we're not, well, a lot of people think that in restaurant accounting, oh, if I go with uh, my mother-in-law, my wife or my husband or my uncle or somebody who can do it at the basement or whatever, that should be sufficient. But it's not because those are where things fall through the crack, especially if it's family. I had, I worked with my wife or my wife and my mother-in-law. Trust me, <laughs> you don't know what it is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Trust me, but no, it's not because they're not, they're not looking at it saying, okay, if I misplace these people, these bills over here, ah, so they're not going to get mad at me because I'm, I'm family, but they need, it's the importance of having everything uh, captured and everything recorded and so on. So for us to come in there and, and be everything for you, the husband, the wife, the brother-in-law, the small garage, somebody working in the basement or whatever. No, strictly restaurants is just, and then what's nice about it too, is you don't even have to have an office space. Oh, there you go. You don't have to have an office space. We're, oh, that's right. You would oh, have to have a back office in your restaurant and make space for, I've seen some back offices in restaurants and they're just a mess and they're just crammed in there. There's food all over the calculator and stuff. Right, um, right, right. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've been in the back office of a restaurant, clearly. But uh, no, yeah, I, I can see how that makes sense. You're always like, uh, hey, where's the paperwork we're supposed to give you the account so you can figure out whether they're making a profit or not? Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. As you were saying about the restaurant tours that they especially the chefs and all when they come out, they have this vision. It's the division of the gingerbread dancing or whatever in their head. They have this vision and you really have to keep reality. We keep things and everybody will always be like, yes, chef, no chef. Yes, chef. No, we keep it real. We turn around and tell you, this is where you're at. Okay. This is where your costs are at. This is where mm -hmm. you're supposed to be at. When you measure kitchen labor, you don't measure kitchen label off the total sales of the restaurant because they didn't make that glass of wine. They didn't pour that that bottle. They only worked in the back. Mm. Okay. So you can't turn around and measure that because then you're actually giving them credit and you're lowering their costs when you have to turn around and say, on an average, if you're a higher end restaurant, you can have a 20% labor cost for the back of the house. Anything on down, it's got to be 15 to 17% off total food sales. And then you work backwards. People don't think mm -hmm. about that. They work. Back. And next thing you know, especially if you do with uh, chefs and all that stuff, they got to have a whole entourage. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what? They got this sous chef and they got that pastry chef and they got that person over there and that person over there. And they look at the kitchen and say, oh, my kitchen is doing great. No, it's not. And you can't have the front of the house pay for the back of the house because the front of the house, you're paying less wages, especially mm -hmm. with the uh, minimum wage and the hourly wages out there. You're paying in the back. You're not, so you can't have them carry in the back because yeah. they cost more in the back. So we do keep, again, some people, they'll, they'll listen. Anybody who reaches out to Strickland and really want to grow, they would listen. And other times you get some people like, well, I know, I know. Well, okay, then what do you want Strictly Restaurant to do for you? You know what I mean? It's crazy. Starting a business, what would you, what sort of advice would you give to some of our listeners that base, is based on success, based on passion, knowledge, or combination, or what, what do you think are some of the keys? I think if you want to start a business, you have to, obviously, you have to have passion about about this industry. Mm -hmm. It is a 24 seven. Yeah. And it is a 24 seven, any business, any owner out there, you got to work. It is 24 seven. And that's why we said before about, I had one gentleman said, Oh, I need to bring home a thousand dollars a week. I need a paycheck. I told him, don't quit your job. Stay at work. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Because you get paid less. You have yeah. obligations, you have rent, you have employees, you have taxes, you have bills. So it is passion. But then sometimes they get blinded by that passion and they think that, oh, if I put in over a, a restaurant over down an alleyway, that you're going to want to walk down, go down an alleyway to go to their place. And that's not the case. So sometimes it is difficult for them to really hear um, the truth. But for me, I would turn around and say, if anybody who wants to start the business, it is passion. And our job is to see your passion come through. We need, we will help you have that passion come out. If you allow us to do what we do best, if you allow us to manage your back of the house, 
work in conjunction with you for your vision to come out. You will be successful. But like I said, don't go down. I had one gentleman down in, in Manhattan. He was going down an alleyway and he was going to open up a wine bar and then tapas and all. And I'm like, you see where you're at? I mean, you want, and then nobody's going to really, you know what I mean? It's not like you out on the main drag. You were down around an alley. And I'm like, listen, there's only a seedy part that the people will go down around the alley. It's not a high end wine and tapas. So, <laughs> and then obviously to this day, he still hasn't opened up the place, but you know, yeah. Because again, he, what he's looking at and what he's trying to figure, if a restaurant's closed and you think you're going to come in and turn it around, if it closed before COVID, then the restaurant didn't do well. Somewhere it fell flat, it didn't do marketing, it didn't do, okay. Obviously now you're in COVID, it's a different story, but still you have to turn around and say, what did the owners do prior to, and even during COVID to make this a success? And I also too, as you go out outside of out of your cities, and you start getting into your suburbans and so on, you want to look to see if there's a quick check or a Wawa, or where's the nearest McDonald's? Because they did their, their studies. They did the financial studies and the economic studies. And if they didn't find that this strip was viable, mm -hmm. that there's no McDonald's on this road between here and there, no quick checks, no Wawa, then it's not a viable through fare. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a chance that you're going to say, let me roll the dice and turn around and build a restaurant over here. The landlord's going to want double digit rent percent because you're the one who came into here mm -hmm. and it's, you're not going to do well. So if restaurants come to us and again, allow us to do what we do best and then you're going to be successful. You really are. You yeah. can't buy things over the counter and say, I got QuickBooks or I got this and I got this over here and so on. No, let us help you see what your vision is. And the more it is, then you can say, you know what though, this isn't, it's not working. I don't like this dish. And then we're going to help you change it. There you go. That's brilliant to have, having a business advisor, especially with someone with the experience that you have in the field. How can restaurants and chefs get a hold of you so they can find out how to utilize your services? They could always go to uh, strictlyrestaurants.com. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's S-T-R-I-C-T-L-Y, restaurants with an S.com. Or they can call me 646-320-5206. Or well, the office line here is 609-838-9223. Or well, we also have a toll-free line, which is, we have a toll-free line, which is 844-382-2228. That's 844-382-2228. So many ways that people can could connect with us. And I, for me, this is my, it's my business line too. As you said, I'd give you the office line too but people can reach me 24 seven. When you do call us, we are part, like I said, we are part of your team. So it's not restaurants are open seven days a week and so on. And we're part of that. Even though the office may be Monday to Friday, but seven days a week, I'm there with you. So you're, you're never alone. That's freaking awesome, man. That is awesome. Anything we want to touch on before we go? I think that the, again, I think that if people reach out to, to Strictly Restaurants on prior to, especially in today, or even during, look at the supply chain out there and the cost. You've got beef and pork's up 21%, fish is up at 8%, eggs are up 8%, chicken's 9%. And you've got to reach out to, or you can reach out to us and we can help you. Let's analyze and let's look to see what sells, what doesn't sell? They don't, some people will say, oh, I can't get rid of my mother's meatballs or so on. This is just a signature dish. But if you can't get the same ingredients, the same product, then all of a sudden it, it alters the flavor. So yeah. people will come in and be like, oh, you know, my flavor or my expectations with this. And then all of a sudden it falls flat because the supply chain is not mm -hmm. there. So we'll work with you. We're not going to do it for you. We will work with you to to single out what is good, what's not good. Every day, if you're something shortage, and like I saw today, this morning, a guy was selling six wings, a soda and fries for 12 bucks. Wow. Yeah, yeah, six wings. I'm like, six wings, okay? And fries, and I said, now that's gotta be a low cost item and he's selling it for $12. And I said, do you move it a lot? He says, no. I said, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's twelve dollars, you know, yeah. for six wings. Okay, yeah. but it's it's things like that. It's, it's it's things like that, and that's where it's interesting because I will come in and I will just my advice mm -hmm. or, or something I notice. And so I think anything again, it's with the supply chain shortage, the labor shortage that we have up over here. We've seen the news that they said with this extra unemployment they had gotten, it amortized out with no rent. 
Now today, they announced today too that they freeze the student loan, the federal student loan now into May. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So by you doing that, you're basically, now like anybody who's young, you can tell me I don't have to pay after $300 to my student loan, I'm gonna go spend that $300. Well, what happens is if you spend that, you're not gonna have that to come out for us. So, but because of it, the reason I brought that up is that they figured and they, the economists came up and said it was like a $55,000 a year Hey, now these people, they were getting that. And now they want to come out and they want $55,000 a year. They want to turn around and do this. And this is the challenge that we have in trying to re-educate the consumer or now the employee that this, no, this whole pandemic caused things to be upside down and so on. And, you know, obviously from the labor and now the supply shortage and all. So to be a restaurant operator, you, you really need to turn around and allow strictly restaurants to manage your back office, to manage your bills, work in conjunction with you while you are managing your front of the house and you're managing your labor and so on. I, I, I think for us, if, if we can get people out there to reach out to us prior to, or even during here, we can help you come out of this. And it's, yeah, I never, let me tell you, and it's no, it's no nine years being in this business over here of my own company, 20 something years of being a CFO controller, no restaurants closed underneath my help. That's awesome, man. It's a, it's from knowing this industry and knowing how things are. Sometimes I look at people, I look at the maitre d's outfit. I'll look mm -hmm. at something or you go to a restaurant, you ever go to a restaurant on a Friday night and you got two people sitting in a six top. It's like, why would you sit people, two people sitting at a six top table and especially a boot. So when mm -hmm. somebody like myself come with my four kids, I'm, I'm like beating on, I'm like, man, cause I can't get these kids to sit down and eat because you sat two people at a six top table and that, so it's things like that, that the manager should have worked with the hostess mm -hmm. and the manager should have said, you know what though, it is a Friday night. Let's stare deuces over to this section over here or these tables over here. Don't take up. So it's things like that, that I will turn around and help you actually see and so on you know there you go i think it's i think it's extraordinary i never really thought about the back end of it and i know people that have restaurants there's a lot of issues that they have to do and yeah it's it's a really hard business i've thought about getting in the restaurant business and i'm like no those people just work their butts off and you don't need any more paying them but paperwork than you already have no, so it jeff can, it can pay off it really can pay off yeah. if you have the right team in place and mm -hmm. if you allow the people who you're hiring to do, I had one gentleman who wanted to expand and I went out and did a market research for him. <coughs> Excuse me. I did a market research for him. And I said, Hey guys, I said, you want to open up right around the corner where you're at, you're going to cut your lunch business in half. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense. So why would you do it? But, and they listen, they never did it, mm -hmm. but you can be very rewarding. There you go. There you go. Jeff, it's been wonderful to have you on the show and insightful. Give us your dot com so people can go find you on the interwebs. Strictlyrestaurants.com. There you go. Strictlyrestaurants.com. Thank you very much for coming on, Jeff. We certainly thank you for having us and happy holidays to you and you. Happy holidays to you too. And to our audience as well, wherever you are in the holidays when we publish this, I think it'll be tonight. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy holidays and a, a safe new year. Be good to each other. Go to YouTube.com to see the video version of this. Go to Goodreads.com and see Chris show us and see all the things we're doing there. All of our groups, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, check them all out. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Be well, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye,